So we'll pick up where we left off talking about your MHC class 1 and MHC class 2 molecules. And remember that MHC class 1, okay, are found on all nucleated cells. So your mature red blood cells are not going to have MHC class 1. And again, this is particularly important with regard to the CD8 positive cells, which we'll get to later, CD8 positive T cells, which are cytotoxic will be able to kill the cells that have antigen, pathogen antigen displayed in the MHC class 1 molecule. So you've got bad guys displayed here, and that's what the CD8 positive cells look at in order to kill the cell. And an important component, important correlation, is when a cell is infected by a virus, it will increase the expression of interferon alpha, and interferon beta, uh, beta, okay? And what these two do is they increase the expression of the MHC class 1, which enables your system, your, your body, to clear that virus. So if you see uh, oftentimes questions about how does the body respond to viruses, how does the body respond to bacteria or to fungi. So it's very important with regard to viral protection that you understand the mechanism of interferon alpha and beta increasing the expression of MHC class 1 in order to eliminate viral, virally infected cells. And of course this cell is cytotoxic and it blows up, uh, it blows up that cell with the use of uh, lysis. Okay? And we'll get more into that as we talk more about cytokines. So question number five is what cells have MHC class 1 molecules on their surface? Uh, a, antigen presenting cells. Yes, that's a nucleated cell, so they do have it. B, all nucleated cells, mature red B cells, are not nucleated, so that would be uh, the case as well. So essentially, basically, all nucleated cells. In terms of number six is, MHC class 1 molecules may have, and this is what we were talking about yesterday with regard to the HLA designations. So if you remember that MHC class 1, okay, when we talk about human leukocyte antigen, A, B, or C, you know that you're talking about an MHC class 1. So in this case, the answer would be A, HLA, A, B, or C. Whereas if you have MHC class 2 molecules, okay, so MHC class 2 molecules, those are only going to be displayed on your antigen presenting cells. And as we discussed yesterday, those are going to be your macrophages, your dendritic cells, and your B cells, okay? And this particular MHC class 1 we'll unpack a little bit more in detail, but at this stage, let's discuss answer number B, which is these would have human leukocyte antigen, and then you can say uh, DP, QR, just like uh, the alphabet PQR, okay? And that's what, let's make this a little more clear. Uh, so this is what you're, when you're dealing with an MHC class 2 molecule, you'll know that with regard to whatever number is in front of here, if it's a DP, then you're dealing with HLA, uh, HLA uh, DP, which is an MHC class 2 molecule. Now, one interesting point about this is with regard, as we talked about yesterday, with regard to the MHC molecules, they're specific to the species, but you and I might share the same uh, HLA or MHC molecule, okay? And in fact, that's how we match with regard to transplants. The other aspect of that is with regard to MHC molecules and MHC class 2, remember, this is antigen presentation, okay, that you may need, for example, a particular MHC class 2 to be able to properly present to the, uh, to, to the T cells. And in doing so, you might be able to survive an infection that I can't because you have a particular MHC molecule that I don't have. I'll give you an example. I spend a lot of time in uh, South Sudan, and oftentimes the people that, um, that I encounter, obviously they've had malaria or they have malaria, and they have a type of malaria, falciparum, uh, that is, would kill me in about two days. But they're able to survive it because of they've got a different uh, immunological makeup than I do, and oftentimes that has to do with your MHC class 
to an MHC molecules. And so, in other words, it's there to enhance the survival of the species. So, in question number seven, which of the following increases the number of MHC class II molecules on the cell surface? And we talked about that yesterday. That's going to be interferon gamma. As we talked about earlier, those MHC class II molecules, okay, are for antigen presentation, and those are going to be increased with interferon gamma. Interferon gamma will also increase the expression of MHC class I, okay, whereas interferon alpha and beta, as we just discussed, will only increase the expression of MHC class I molecules. And again, that's due to being able to identify and protect ourselves from viruses. Number eight is, which of the following is part of the MHC class I molecule? Now this is where you get into a little bit of the molecular aspects of the molecules themselves. So if I take an MHC class I molecule, okay, it essentially has got this component here that's called a beta-2 microglobin, okay, and it has an alpha, uh, it has an alpha chain. So the, it's got an, an alpha 1 and an alpha 2, and it also has an alpha 3. Okay, so I'm not, I'm just sort of laying out what it has in terms of the, the receptor itself. Okay, so anytime you see beta 2 microglobin, you know you're dealing with an MHC class 1 molecule. And you'll see that correlation again when you get to pathology and you start talking um, about inflammatory diseases you'll also pick up on beta-2 microglobin, which we'll go into a little bit later. But for right now, realize that what is being displayed essentially, okay, in terms of, let's say if it's a virus, some guts of a virus, it would be displayed in this alpha-1, alpha-2 pocket. And they talk about it kind of like a hot dog or something in a bun is one expression or one way that they describe it. So that, that's the component of the MHC in terms of the, the, the molecular structure of this MHC molecule. Now, the interesting thing is, as, for example, a bad guy is in the cytosol and it gets processed by the proteasome, which you know from histology and from biochemistry that the proteasome is going to cut up the guts of whatever you've got you know, to dispose of in the cell, whether it's foreign or self. And then what happens is there's this transport protein called TAP1, okay, and TAP2. And what that does is essentially, again, this oversimplification, but for our purposes, uh, what helps us get through medical school is to understand that TAP1 and TAP2 are what's going to help you locate that protein up here into this pocket of the alpha-1, alpha-2. So that's specific. So three things that we need to think about is beta-2 microglobin is specific to MHC class 2. The TAP1-2 is specific to MHC class 1. Sorry, my mistake, class 1. And that you've, you're displaying it in the alpha-1-2, which is probably um, not going to be what will be tested with regard to this, but certainly these two. And the reason why it's interesting is because some pathogens actually can uh, thwart the ability of TAP1, TAP2. For example, uh, herpes simplex virus 1 and 2, conveniently with TAP1 and 2, will thwart, the will thwart this particular mechanism so that you cannot display that herpes simplex up here in the pocket. And then your CD8 positive or your NK cells are not going to be able to eliminate that particular virus. So that's a defense mechanism of herpes simplex 1 and 2. So that's the specifics of MHC class 1. Now, MHC class 2 is different, obviously, okay? So remember, where do we find it? Antigen-presenting cells, MAX, our beloved dendritic cells, and our B cells, okay? Now, the MHC class 2 molecule, slightly different uh, structure in terms of its pocket for its hot dog, okay? It's got an alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2. And your pathogen is 
or your your protein here, your antigen, you know, the the interesting part to the to the other side to the T cells is who they're presenting to, okay, is displayed in this alpha 1 beta 1. Now, it, it doesn't have this guy doesn't have tap 1 tap 2. Instead, it has what they call the invariant chain, okay? And the way that I think about the invariant chain, it goes through that whole proteasome, you know, processing them, I and that's standard for cells. But the, the way I think about the invariant chain, again, an oversimplification, is that it's like the bus driver, right? So the bus is going to take it, take the pathogen or the guts of it, the protein, to be displayed up here. And what the invariant chain does is it takes a look and makes sure that it's the right thing that's being displayed. So if your invariant chain is not working, then obviously you're never going to get your you're never going to get your protein displayed up here in order order to display it to the uh, beloved T cells. All right. The other important thing to think about with regard to MHC class 2, which we already said was DPQR, right? It's in terms of in terms of HLA designations. So that was, you know, unique to this. The other thing that's unique to the MHC uh, class 2 is that let's think about a clinical correlation. If, for example, you did not have MHC class 2, okay, in this case, like if you just didn't have those molecules, you would never be able to present to the T cells, and you would never be able to have this mechanism of adaptive immunity, okay? So that's actually a question they like to ask because they want you to understand that you need an MHC class 2 uh, capability in order to present to the T cells. So going back is, now that we've reviewed that, let's look at question eight. Which of the following is part of the MHC class one molecule? A, beta two microglobin? Yes, that's what we covered already. And then B is two alpha and two beta chains? No, that's your MHC class two. Okay, C is invariant chain. No, remember that's MHC class 2. That's your bus driver that takes the protein up. And then D is TAP uh, 1 and 2. And so it's, yes, TAP 1 and 2 is a protein mechanism that enables the, the transport. But the actual, the actual receptor, the actual pocket itself is going to be your beta 2. As part of that is going to be beta 2 microglobin along with alpha 1, alpha 2, and alpha 3. So yeah, it's partially correct, but it's not the most correct. Okay. In terms of number 10 is, uh, what does a virally infected cell secrete that increases the expression of class 1? We beat this uh, as a dead horse, and that's going to be answer B. It's going to be interferon alpha and beta. To make uh, the first one, correct, interferon gamma, that's going to increase the expression of MHC class 2. Now, number 11 is, what chromosome codes for the HLA human leukocyte antigens, and are they expressed codominantly? Well, we talked about that yesterday. Yes, you have one from your mother and your father, so you have a total of six, uh, six there, and it happens to be chromosome 6, so the answer would be D, chromosome 6, and yes, it is a codominant uh, expression. And the last question, which we already covered, uh, or actually we didn't, is uh, number 12. One of the human herpes viruses, type 4, which is Epstein-Barr virus, most of us have Epstein-Barr, uh, virulence factors is that it, it hinders antigen presentation by inhibiting what? Okay, and the answer is C, the proteasome. So what this guy does, quite interestingly, um, is Epstein-Barr, inhibits the proteasome, and remember that snips up that bad guy protein into uh, bite size, if you will, uh, components that can fit up here in the pocket. Well, if the proteasome can't cut it up into small enough sizes, it's too large to be, that protein's too large to be presented uh, up here in the pocket, and so you never get antigen presentation to the T cell, which obviously is going to suppress your adaptive immunity. So that's how that works in terms of Epstein-Barr. Now, let's look at number A, though. We've already talked about that with regard to TAP1 and TAP2. Okay, that is part of the MHC class 1 molecule, and that is part of the defense mechanism of, or the countermeasures, if you will, of herpes simplex virus 1 and 2.
And then the B is recycles the processed antigen back to the cytosol. So this is quite tricky. That actually is describing cytomegalovirus, which is herpes simplex virus number five, okay? And what that does is, you know, they process the antigen inside the cytosol, but then it just sort of puts it in this little endless loop. It goes around the roundabout and roundabout, and it never gets presented um, in the MHC molecule. Thank you.